But tonight, our topic is something that's very dear to my heart. Actually, nung sinabi sa akin ni Pastor Ikoy, uh, Matt, can you speak on this topic? Naisip ko agad, wow, that's the topic I would want to speak on for various reasons. And one of them is, sabi ko, na, nag-speak na ako about this topic before. So sabi ko, okay, pwede ko to gawin ulit. But I, as I was studying, I, I was humbled by God because I realized that there's still so much about this topic that I do not understand. And I think I could spend a whole lifetime trying to learn about this topic and still not come to the full understanding of what it is. And what it is, is the topic of worship. And nakakatawa lang kasi as the worship leader was here a while ago, by the way, praise God for the worship team, uh, because you um, shared my introduction. Hindi tayo nag-usap, pero yung sasabihin ko, yun na yun yung sinabi nyo. So thank you, wala na ako introduction. <laughs> but really, um, itong topic na to is something that nakakatawa nga, no? sabi ng worship team, uh, so what is worship? Ano nangyari? Lahat tayo tahimik eh, no? And that's really the, that's really how a lot of us feel. Because when, when we bring up worship, pwede natin sabihin prayer, ah, prayer is like this. Pag sinabi natin, reading the Word of God, ah, we're reading the Word of God is like this. But when we talk about prayer, what happens is there's a lot of things that pops into our mind. Tama ba? Iba iba tayo ng opinion. If, if you want to try this, you can look at the person beside you, ask them, mamiana, what worship is, at sasabihin niya sa'yo, iba sa naiisip mo. That's my guess. Because for us, worship is something vague na hindi natin masyado maintindihan for some of us. And so tonight, it's wonderful that we come to the Word of God and study what the Word of God says about worship. In fact, it was Jesus who will, it, it's Jesus who will be teaching us from the, 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 the Gospel of John what worship is. Now, dahil nga various, yung ating understanding of what worship is, iba-iba din yung pag-express natin ng worship, tama ba? Um, some people, they define worship as yung song, yung mga kanta before mag-start yung service. Sinong ganun yung sentiments? Worship is yung kanta bago mag-start yung service. Para sa iba, in definition niya, yung worship yung part na hindi ko na-attendan sa service. Di ba? Kasi naghahanap pa ako ng parking sa baba at sobrang daming tao. Ganon. Um, I asked, I, I talked to someone who is in the worship team at in-explain niya sa akin. Sobrang passionate pa ng pag-explain niya. Sabi niya, actually, worship is yung last part ng praise and worship. Kasi praise and worship, di ba? So yung first part, praise. Kasi yun yung mabibilis na kanta. Talaga? Sabi ko, oh, yun yun ah. Tapos yung mga slow song sa dulo, yun yung worship. Ha? Ah, di ko alam yun before ah. So yun yung definition yun ng worship. And yung pag-express natin yung worship is even, uh, it varies even more. Some people, when they worship, they like to lift their hands. Di ba? At pag talaga na feel nila yung worship song, tumataas pa yan. Di ba? Oh, grabe. Pag nakita mo yung katabi mo, grabe. Nasa mood to mag-worship talaga, di ba? Pag pumapalakpak siya, gumigeo ang yung sa... Grabe, nasa mood siya mag-worship today. Ganyan ba yung worship? Is that what the Bible says about worship? The sad truth is, for us, worship has become an experience in the church. Tama ba? Kapag yung lighting tamang-tama, medyo dim, medyo purple yung kulay, di ba? Pag may smoke machine, plus 10 points. Pag may laser lights na color green, yun na yun. Worship. But the question is, if you open the Bible, and if you really dig down what God says when He talks about worship, is that what we will find? So today, what we will do is we will endeavor to define what worship is. We will define Worship, not from our definition, not from our experience, but from what the Bible says. So if you have your Bibles with you, please open it to John 4, and we will study four verses. John 4, verse 20 
to 24. But to give you a definition, a, a, a common definition for all of us, it is this. Worship is our proper response to God for who He is and what He has done and what He continues to do. Ulitin ko ah. Worship is our proper, I mean word, response. And that is the key for the whole night. If you get that, you get the whole night. Pwede na kayo actually umuwi ngayon. Okay? Because worship is our proper response to God for who He is and what He has done and what He continues to do. You can even add, and what He will do in the future. That is worship. And I said, the key word is response. Kasi in worship is not something that we do. It's not something that we repay back to God. God, ang bait mo sa akin, makapag-worship nga mamaya. Hindi. Worship is our response. And when I say response, it's like the knee-jerk response whenever you're in the doctor's clinic, tas tatamaan niya yung tuhod mo. It's a, a natural, uncontrollable response because you understand what God did for you. And that is our definition for worship. Paul when he wrote that amazing epistle of Romans, he spends chapter 1 to chapter 11 talking about all that who, who God is and all that God has, has done and all that God will do. 11 chapters. And at the end of the chapter, ito yung sabi niya, verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches of, and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgment. How inscrutable are His ways. And verse 36, he says, For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Because it is a response after understanding all that God has done. He bursts out into praise. And I pray that tonight, yun yung mangyayari sa atin. That tonight, when we worship and we, when we understand what worship is, it is not something that we do out of labor. It is not something that we do out of compulsion. Dahil lang may nagsabi sa atin, we do it as a response to all that God has done for us. And that is my prayer for each and every one of us tonight. If you're familiar with the Westminster Shorter Catechism, uh, in the 16th century, all the greatest theological minds gathered together. And they discussed about many aspects of theology. And one aspect that they discussed is this. The question is, what is the chief end of man? Magandang tanong yan, di ba? Ano ba yung purpose natin dito sa mundong to? What is the end goal? What are we created for? And all the theological minds gathered together came up with this answer. And the answer is, the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Now, honestly for me, honestly, dati, hindi ko yun mapagdikit eh. Kasi for me, ganito lang yung choices ko. Either I glorify God, pero badu yung buhay ko. Ano mo yan? Boring. Or, I enjoy my life, pero I'm not glorifying God. But when I read this, it shocked me that these great minds said our end goal is to glorify God. And not only that, to enjoy God forever. Wow. And they made a connection. Kasi ganito yun. When you glorify God, you enjoy God. And when you enjoy God, you glorify God. C.S. Lewis had a quote, and it's what he C.S. Lewis. I think we delight to praise what we enjoy because the praise not merely expresses but completes the enjoyment. And I realized something. Worship is a response. And when you understand all that God has done for you, you cannot help but worship Him. I'll give you an example, an illustration. For the guys, sino mahilig sa basketball dito? Wala. Wala, okay? 
Sino dito yung sinusubaybayan yung UAP? Diba? Season na ngayon, eh. season 80 na. So some of you guys, imagine na yung team nyo, sorry girls ha, girls, baka meron din mahilig sa basketball dito. Wala, okay, wala. <laughs> but for the guys, mainly guys, imagine nyo, nakanood kayo ng basketball game. And it's your favorite team against your least favorite team. Tapos yung favorite team mo, down by two points. Two points lang. Kaso three seconds left. Pero bola nila, bola nila. So napasa dun sa star player nung team nyo, pag salo ng star player, three, two, nadapa! Nako, nadapa. Kaso nung nadapa yung star player, naitsya niya yung bola. Three, two, tapos na shoot! Ang gagawin mo ba nun? Good job. Uwi na tayo. Gano'n ang magagawin mo? For the guys, ano gagawin niyo? Sisigaw ka. Wow! Babaliw ka. Kasi, what happened was so amazing, you cannot help but praise. But worship. In fact, yung katabi mo, kahit di mo kilala yan, yayakapin mo siya. Di ba? Yes! Lalo na pagka pares kayo ng team na gusto. Di ba? Yung mga ladies na hindi nakarelate, bigyan ko kayo ng illustration just for you. Ladies, yung mga in love na dyan? Or yung mga hindi in love? Yung mga naging third party. Ay, third party. Yung mga naging, sorry, third wheel. We need to improve the vocabulary. <laughs> yung mga naging third wheel sa date, di ba? Kunwari, meron ka friend, tapos sabi niya, Uy, labas naman tayo, best. Kasi may miss na kita, matagal na kitang hindi nakaka-bonding. Di ba? Yun yung linya nila lagi. Pagdating mo, may kasama siya. Date pala yun. At ikaw ay, kung nalang third wheel. Nakikita mo ba sila na pinipilit nila, sinasabi, Uy, sabihin mo sa akin, maganda ako. Hindi naman, di ba? The guy would say to the girl, ang ganda mo. Sa isip-isip mo, parang hindi naman. Di ba? <laughs> parang hindi naman. Ba't ganun? Sabihin naman ng girl, kung nga, ang cute mo ngayon eh. Ganda-ganda ng suot mo. But they do not force that. That comes of the abundance of their joy. And that is what the Bible teaches. Worship is not something we do externally, something we do as if it's a, it's a job or a chore. Worship with the understanding of what God has done is something that bursts out of us. And that is true. Tinan me Psalm. The psalmist, Psalm 73, sabi niya, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth I desire besides you. That doesn't sound to me as someone who is forced into saying this. No, the psalmist understands who God is and loves God for that. So you see, true worship is an overflow of a heart that has tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And when you have tasted and seen that God is good, you will worship Him. You will worship Him. So what is worship? Now we turn to our Bibles. John 4, 20 to 24, and I will just read this for you. I'll start in verse 20. Verse 20, Sabinia, Our fathers worship on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Verse 21, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. And I pray that God would bless the reading of His Word today. First point, we come to the object of true worship. The object of true worship. And the object of true worship is none other than God Himself. And if you worship something else, that is not worship. Because the only one who is worthy of worship 
is God Himself. Jesus Christ, when He was tempted by Satan, sabi ni Satan sa kanya, Oh Jesus, bigay ko to sa'yo lahat. Ganun talaga yung boss ni Satan. Eh, no? Oh Jesus, bigay ko to sa'yo lahat. Magbaw ka lang sa'kin. Sa and what did Jesus say? It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. No other God. No other God. I remember, 1977, hindi pa ako buhay But I remember, I read an article before that talks about a woman who accidentally, as she was cooking a uh, uh, burrito, burrito talaga, burned the wrap. And on a burning wrap, pag angat niyang ganun, I think we have a picture of that, pag angat niya, there was ingrained with a burn, burn mark, a face of Jesus. Totoo. And sabi niya sa anak niya, na nine years old lang during that time, tignan mo anak, sino to? And sabi na anak niya, nine years old, si Jesus. At sabi niya, validated. Si Jesus nga to. And si Jesus nagpakita siya sa akin sa tortilla. <sighs> and believe it or not, that woman got the tortilla and went to the priest and got it blessed. And the tortilla now is in a shrine. And they call it the shrine of Christ of the tortilla. I'm not, I'm not joking. This is true. You can, you can search for it. The shrine of Jesus of the tortilla. Yun yun nangyari. And this woman, if you ask her, sabi niya, it changed her life. Wow, amazing. The tortilla changed her life. And I believe that this woman was sincere in her heart, no doubt about it. For her to go to the priest, to go through, through so much lengths. In fact, gumawa pa siya ng shrine, di ba? Nilagyan pa niya ng cotton, no joke ha? nilagyan niya ng cotton yung baba para mukha daw nasa clouds, yung tortilla. But she was sincere. But the sad truth is, she was sincerely wrong. Because she was not worshiping the one true God. She was worshiping a figment of her imagination. She was worshiping a tortilla. Isaiah 4, verse 18 says, To whom will you liken God? Or what likeness compare with Him? Who is like God? Who is like the Lord? Paul says in Acts 29, 17, verse 29, being then God's offspring, we ought not to think the divine being is like gold or silver or stone. He is not like that. An image formed by the art and imagination of man. God is so much bigger than what you think, Paul is saying to them. And you cannot confine him in, in silver and stones. You cannot confine him in temples. God is the creator of heaven and earth. That is what Paul was saying. And he says, do not make a God out of the likeness of man. And we say to ourselves, Matt, di naman ako ganyan. Never ko gagawin yun. But the sad truth is, unintentionally, we are doing that. We are creating a God out of our own image. How? When we say that, oh, I love the goodness of God. I love God being loving. And then we reject God we reject what, God, what the Bible says, that God is a wrathful God. And we say, hindi, hindi ganun yung God ko. When we say, God, gusto ko si God, gusto ko siya kasama lagi, but you cannot let go of your sin, then you worship a God who does not care about sin, and that is not the God of the Bible. Right? And when we say that God will give me health, wealth, and prosperity, Sad truth is, that is not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible says, take up your cross and follow me. And we have twisted God. We have twisted Him. We have twisted His words. And we have created a God out of our own image. And whenever we read in the Bible something that we don't like about God, we reject it and we say, that is not my God. But the sad truth is, we have to come to the Bible and whatever the Bible says about God, we believe it to be true. We do not worship a God made in our own image. 
A lot of people say, I worship God. And you allow God, for sure. I just don't believe in Jesus Christ. Right? They say, I, I believe in God, but I believe Jesus isn't the only way. I believe in Jesus too, but he's just one of the ways. Right? But the sad truth is, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the exact representation of God. And if you do not worship Christ, you are not worshiping God. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And if you do not come through Jesus Christ, you cannot worship God. And so I pray that today we would really reflect on that because I know I know myself. And sadly, sometimes I have twisted God. I want a God that would fit my needs. I don't like a God who would change me. I want a God who would be comfortable with my sin. But I realize, no, I have to come to God and let Him, let me conform to Him, not Him conform to me. So the object of true worship is God Himself and none other, not a man-made God, the one true God, the God of Scripture, the God of the Bible. And that's why sadly, sabi sa Matthew 7, verse 23, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Wow. Krabi, and dami lang ginawa. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Because they have worshipped somebody else. It's not Jesus Christ. And it's not God. We have to worship God for who He says He is, not for who he, we want Him to be. And that is a truth we have to understand. That is a truth we have to come to grips with tonight if we really want to worship God. Not a God made in our own image. Or else, wala tayong pinakaiba ng sabay na nag-worship ng tortilla. Right? Next, the manner of true worship. Now, okay yun. Okay, the conversation with Jesus and the Samaritan, uh, just, just to give you a context, Jesus came, and you know what? The Jews had no dealing with the Samaritans. In fact, they hate each other. Sobrang galit sila sa isa't isa that the Jews, whenever they would travel, they would rather take the long cut rather than to pass through Samaria because they don't like each other. And so Jesus was speaking with this woman, and this woman was shocked. Hala, but niya okay nakausap. And she came to the realization that she, want, she wants what Jesus is offering. Nalala niya yung kwento? Tapos sabi ni, sabi ni ng babae, Sir, give me that drink. But Jesus says, Tawag mo yung asawa mo. And the woman says, Actually, Jesus, wala akong asawa eh. That's true. Wala kang asawa for you have had five husbands and the one you have now is not your husband. She, and she was pricked to the heart. Man, ang hirap nun. Kung yung disciple mo sa D-group, di ba, alam niya lahat ng ginagawa mo, ayaw mo yun. Kakausapin ka niya, alam kaya ginawa mo. <gasps> text nga lang siya, text nga lang yung disciple mo, ah, Matt, usap tayo, kakabahan ka na eh. Hala, anong ginawa ko? But this man, Jesus Christ, was fully God. He knew the heart of this woman. And she said, I know the sin in your life. And before you come to me, you have to get to, to, get to fix the sin in your life. You have to confess it. So, sinabi ni Jesus Christ. And this woman was pricked to her heart. Sakit. And that's why the question arose. Sabi niya, Jesus, samba kami mag worship. Where do we worship? The Samaritan say, says here in Mount Gerizim, the Jew says in Jerusalem, where do we worship? I want to worship God. I want to repent. And that is the background of what we're talking about today. And the Samaritans, ang tingin nila, dun sa, sa kanila. Because the Samaritans, meron sila away with the Jews, they cannot go to the temple of the Jews, right? So they made their own temple in Mount Gerizim. The Jews, on the other hand, they had their temple of their own. And that was a true temple during that time. So meron division. 
And Jesus exposed the error of worship. Sabi ni Jesus, tinan sa last part, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is of the Jews. Ano ibig sabihin nun? You see, the Samaritans, just a little background about them, they only accept the first five books of the Bible. Yun lang. The prophets, they reject it. So ito lang yung first five books. So Jesus is saying, you know what? You worship, that's true. And you worship God, that's true. But the problem is, you do not know what you worship. Because you are not informed. What you only know is the first five books of the Bible. That's basically the law. You do not know what the prophet says. But he also says something. Sabi niya, the Jews know. But the problem with the Jews is that they don't really have the worshiping attitude. And that's a true error in worship. First is, you have the right motive, but the wrong understanding. You have the right motive, but the wrong understanding. You know, a lot of people, I hear them say, sabi nila ganito, Alam mo, Matt, di ko siya mapigil eh. To worship dun sa, sa kung saan church yun. Di nga nila alam kung ano binu-worship nila. Di ko siya mapigil kasi sobrang sincere niya eh. The problem is, yeah, pwede siya maging sincere. Pero mali pa rin eh. Di ba? And so, this was the problem with the Samaritans. And Jesus was confronting this problem. Paul also confronted this problem in Acts 17. Sabi ni Paul, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. You're religious. But the problem is, you are ignorant. He says the time of ignorance of God, God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Some people have all emotions. All emotions. But they are not informed with the truth. And that is not true worship. I tell you the truth. I came from a church that is all emotions. Totoo. Pag Bible sa din namin, walang Bible. Totoo. Ang gagawin namin nun, magpe-pray kami. And when we pray, we would shout at the top of our lungs. Really. And we would shout the whole night. Minsan, pawis na pawis na ako. Sabi ko, bakit pa ako sumisigaw? Pagod na ako. And I remember my friend who, is not, who does not, did not belong to that church came up to me and sabi niya, Matt, bakit ka sumisigaw? And sa isip ko talaga nun, bakit nga ba ako sumisigaw? Hindi ko alam. Because what I had there is all zeal and emotions but no knowledge of truth. And the problem there is all emotions will eventually die down. If it's not rooted in the truth of the Word of God, eventually it would die down. That is why we are so careful whenever you have a new believer that is infused with the knowledge of God, biglang nakita niya who Christ is, sobre mag emotional high. Sino naka, nakakilala ng ganun? Especially after the retreat, sobrang emotional high yan. Lahat atin din yan. Sampu di group yan. After ng first na retreat. Totoo. After the second week, ah, apat na lang, apat na lang, lima. Hanggang sa pakunti ng pakunti. Tapos mahita mo sabihin niya, burn out ako eh, burn out ako. But the problem there is, the question there is, na burn out ba siya talaga? Or that was all emotions. Emotion that is not grounded in truth will eventually die down. And worship that is all emotion and no truth will eventually die down. That's why we have to be careful. Next, you have the right understanding but the wrong motive. Ito naman yung mga tao na super daming alam. Super daming alam, but the problem is, with all the knowledge, it does not translate to a worshiping heart. In fact, they become too self-righteous. Naiinis sila pag merong hindi kasing dami ng alam nila. And when they come to worship, they're as cold as ice. Because all that knowledge does not translate into worship. And that's another error that we have. Nalala niyo Jews? And that was the rebuke Jesus Christ had for the Jews. Sabi nila, sabi ni Jesus Christ, this people, quoting from Isaiah, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commands of man. 
all knowledge, all knowledge. But deep within him, it's empty. It's empty. So I pray that we would understand that true worship is not just emotion without the truth. And not just truth without the emotion. But emotion grounded in the truth. Emotion grounded in the truth. So we have to understand, ang sabi ni Jesus Christ, the Father is seeking for people who will worship, dalawin sinabi niya, who will worship in spirit and in truth. Yun yung balance dun eh. We worship in spirit and in truth. And what does it mean when we say we worship in spirit? I'll give you three points on, on what it means to worship in the Spirit. One, it is empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. You cannot worship in the Spirit if the Holy Spirit of God is not in you. Therefore, you cannot worship truly if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ. If you have not come to under, understanding of the gospel of Christ and you have surrendered your life to Him, you cannot truly worship. There's no worship apart from the Spirit of God. Romans 8.15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. You know, the Abba, if you translate it to our language today, would mean Daddy. The Holy Spirit enables us to worship God and to have that intimacy with God. Next, it means that it is worship in the inner being. Not external things that we do. It is worship from within. And I praise God that it is worship from within. Bakit? Kasi kung titignan lang niya yung outward worship ko, hindi ako papasa. Kasi sintonado ako eh. Sa totoo lang. And that's why I'm so thankful to the Lord that He does not worship, look at the outer external worship of a man but he looks at the inner worship worship that is done in the spirit psalms 51 verse 16 to 17 says for you will not delight in sacrifice or i would give it you will not be pleased with burnt offerings the sacrifices of god the worship of god are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart Oh God, you will not despise. Worship is from within. Therefore, it doesn't matter what you do externally if you are not okay internally. But that also translates to be true. Now, what you do internally should come out externally. Tama ba? Okay, pupunta sa Sunday service, mag Facebook ka dun. Tapos pag sinabi ng katabi mo, oh, ba't di ka nakikinig sa message? Nag-worship ako in the inner being. Huwag ganun, di ba? Because what true worship is, is that it would translate, it would come out in the external. Right? Next. Worshiping in the Spirit does worship that is not bound by space or circumstance. God the Spirit God is spirit. And that uh, because he is a spirit, he is not bound by a place, bound by time. He is everywhere, omnipresent. And our worship should be everywhere as well. Our worship should not be bound by a place. A lot of us, we think that, grabe, I'm feeling down. Kailangan ko pumunta ng Big Fridays para makapag-worship. Now, it's true that the Bible says that when we come together, there is a worship that is acceptable to the Lord as a church. But this worship that we do together should be a culmination of the worship that is done throughout the week. And the truth is this. If you do not worship God six days a week, you are not worshiping Him on a Sunday. Because worship is everywhere and anywhere. And worship is not bound by space or place or time. And you worship God anywhere, everywhere. That is true worship. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, 
Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? Wow, amazing. Amazing. That God dwells in me. And that worship can be done anywhere. Can you imagine how hard it would be if worship should be done in Jerusalem? Baka hindi tayo mapag-worship. Di ba? Nakita ko yung presyo ng Jerusalem tour. Medyo mahal. So I praise God that worship can be done anywhere. John MacArthur says, Worship is a way of life. Worship is a way of life. And this means this. You can be at work and still have a heart of worship. You can be in EDSA habang sobrang traffic at three hours ka na naghihintay, hindi pa rin gumagalaw. And you can still have a heart of worship. Honestly ako, sobrang gusto ko kumakanta sa kotse. Pero hindi ko lang binubuksan masyado yung bibig ko. Baka matakot yung kotse sa harap ko. Di ba? Baka may isipin niya, may kaaway ako, may kausap ako doon. But really, I love. I love it. You can be in the farthest part of the earth alone without anyone else and you can still worship. If you don't believe me, ask Jonah. Kasi si Jonah nasa belly siya ng fish for three days and he was worshiping God. Right? But the flip side is this. You can be, you can also be at church on a Sunday and not truly worshiping. You can be in the D group. In fact, you can be a D group leader and not be worshiping. And all of that is just external. But you know in your heart, man, I'm not worshiping God. I'm not worshiping God. So we have to be careful. Worship is a way of life. Now, what does it mean to worship in the truth? I was told by my friend that there was a church that used a Bruno Mars song for their worship service. Okay? At ang, ang, ang ginawa nila, siyempre ginawa nilang Christian, Christianese. <laughs> Iniba nila yung lyrics. So the lyrics went like this. When I see your face, there's not a thing that I would change. Lord, you're amazing just the way you are. Major cheesy. And I was thinking to myself, now that is not grounded in truth. Bakit? Because if that person sees the face of God, he would die. Because that's what the Bible says, right? And when you see your face, you will be disintegrated. You won't want to see your, his face. You would die. So we have to understand, worshiping is also not just spirit, but truth. True worship comes out of an understanding of the Word of God. Now, I want to share with you this story. Nehemiah, uh, you can write it down in your Bibles. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 3. And this is such an amazing story. Because the, the people of, of Israel, out of their captivity, went back and they for the first time ever again, they spent time in the Word of God. And I'll read it for you. And he read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. He was reading not from the New Testament. Minsan pa nibabasa ka ng Acts, natutuwa ka pa but this guy, he was reading from the law. And for us, hirap noon, parang challenge noon. But they spent time. They read the word of God. From how long? Early morning until midday. Some commentary says this lasted for six hours. Can you imagine that? Six hour Bible study. Sino game? Diba? Ayun, meron. Praise God. Mamiya, puna tayo sa likod. <laughs> but it was a six hour Bible study. And what happened? And Ezra blessed the Lord. This was towards the end. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, 
amen, amen. After six hours, they all said, amen, amen. And lifting their hands, they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Amazing. You know, all revivals started in an understanding and a love for the word of God. The reformation started because men stood up for the word of God. And we have to be grounded with a word. That's why Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. See, from the word of God, it was ushered into worship. Kasi ito sabihin ko sa inyo, and this is true in my life. The more you know God, the more you will love God. And the more you love God, the more you will worship God. And it's so different from the world. Tama ba? Kasi sa to lang, sa mundo ganito, the more you know that person, the less you love that person. Why? Kasi simula, okay kayo eh. Kunwari yung lovers, oh, perfect siya in every way. Di ba? <laughs> Lahat perfect. Nakakatuwa. After one year, nakakainis din pala siya, no? After two years, nakakainis siya talaga. Di ba? Because the more you know that person, the more their imperfections come up. Because they are imperfect people. But God is perfect. And the more you know about this perfect God, the deeper you love this God. And the greater you will worship this God. Now, let me tell you the result of true worship. The result of true worship. And we're about to end. When you have the spirit and truth and you combine them together, ano mangyari? There would be an explosion of true worship. I tell you the truth. Acts 16. Remember the story. Paul and Silas, they were preaching the word of God. They were serving God. They were persecuted for doing that. And what happened was they were beaten and they were sent in prison. Now I know what I would do in prison. Sabihin ko, God, but kaganyan? Nanginig-ginig pa yung boses ko. Ako na nga yung nagsaserve. Diba? Yun yung line natin. Ako na nga yung nagsaserve. Ako pa yung nasasaktan. But Paul and Silas did not have that kind of attitude. Why? Because they were grounded in truth. And they were worshiping in the Spirit. And about midnight, Acts chapter 16, verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Can you believe that? Binugbugka. And by the way, they put their feet on stocks. And when your feet is on stocks, it, it would cause your feet to cramp up over and over again. Now, one cramp is enough, man. Sakit na nun. Tapos na ako. But they were in prison and their feet were cramping over and over again. And what did they do? They worshiped God. Because their worship is not based on circumstance. Their worship is not based on their feelings. Their worship is based on the truth of who God is. And you know, if that is your worship, your worship cannot be touched by the world. Even if the world is crumbling down, you will worship. You will worship. Remember Job. Job, after losing everything, his, his, all his possession, as biglang yung pinakalas doon, na, nabalitaan niya, lahat ng anak niya namatay. Man, that's hard. But you know what Job did? 1 verse 20. Then Job arose and tore his robes and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshiped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the worship that is unaffected by the world. This is the worship that is unchanged by the world because this worship is fixed on the unchanging God. And if your worship is fixed on the unchanging God, your worship will not change. In fact, habang humihirap yung circumstance mo, the greater the worship you lift up to God. 
And that's the, the, the true worship that God loves to have. It's a pleasing aroma to Him. Now, as we end, some of you might be thinking, Matt, gusto ko yan. Gusto ko yan. How can I do that? How can I know that I'm worshiping God that way? And I'll give you a proof. Romans 12, verse 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now, when Paul says living sacrifice, get saneleon. Because what the Jews would do was they would sacrifice animal offerings, right? At ito yung clue dyan, ha? Nung, uh, yung animal na yun, pag sinacrifice yun at nasa altar niya na, hindi niya sabihin, Paul, medyo masakit yung ginagawa mo sa akin. Hindi. Medyo mahigpit yung pagkakatali mo ng ano, pa ako. Hindi. Because alam na nung, uh, nung sacrifice niya, he's dead, right? But the Bible says, not dead sacrifice, living sacrifice. And that means you live as though you were dead. Paul puts it, puts it this way, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. True worship is a, a life that is surrendered to God. And the moment you wake up, you don't think, Ano kayang gusto ni Matt? Ano kayang gusto kainin ni Matt? Ano kayang gusto gawin ni Matt? Hindi. Ano kayang gusto ni God? Ano kayang gusto ni Lord? Now, that can come in different ways for each and every one of us. Honestly, for me, when I wake up, my worship is I grab the Bible and read it. Because all that is within me says, reach out for your smartphone. Check me on Facebook. Mo. That's, a, that's my temptation. And for me to say, no, no, Matt, patay ka na. I'm going to do this for God. God is living in me. Christ is living in me. I no longer live for myself. That is true worship. A life that is fully surrendered to God. A life that is not your own anymore. Now, as we end, and honestly, this is my last slide. Ilang beses ko na ba sinabing as we end? Mga limang beses na. I want to remind you of our definition of worship. Worship is our proper response to God for who He is and what He has done and what He continues to do. Now, my question for each and every one of us today is this. Do you understand what God has done for you? If you don't, let me tell you. We have sinned against a holy God. We have sinned greatly against a holy God. And a holy God cannot tolerate sin. His justice demands that sin would be punished. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And we had no escape. We had no escape. But while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God sent His Son in the likeness of man to die on the cross for our sins so that our sins should not be paid by us. Our sins was laid in the shoulders of Jesus Christ. And His righteousness was laid upon us. So that when you face God someday, you will not face God as a sinner. You will face God as a son or a daughter because of the righteousness of Christ. But that offer is only true if you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior and if you have surrendered your life fully to Him. There's no other way. And after three days, Jesus Christ rose again. And Jesus Christ sat at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. I love that. I love to say, Jesus is always praying for me. And that is what Christ has done. That is what God has done. That is what Christ has done. And what the Holy Spirit is doing now is He has sealed us. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is the guarantee now, the word guarantee in the Greek is the word arabon. And yung ibig sabihin na arabon during that time, it was an engagement ring. 
and God gave us the greatest engagement ring to show that he would fulfill his promise, and that is the Holy Spirit. Friends, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins so that we may have the greatest blessing on earth, and that is God himself. And so if you don't understand that, I pray that you would think about it. You would not let the day go without you making things right with God. And if you want to understand fully, I will be there. Or you can talk to your breakout group, breakout leader about the gospel of Jesus Christ without which there is no true worship. And the only reason why we worship it is because of what Christ has done on the cross. Let's all close with a word of prayer.